Coming up, an interview with speaker and author Vianne King and a young mother learns to embrace the blessing of her special needs child. Well, welcome to 700 Club Canada. What a great week we've had with you, Shireen. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. It's like being home or family, right? <laughs> well, you are part of the family here at 700 Club Canada. And today is International Day of People with Disabilities. So what's your experience with people with disabilities? As a teacher, I've had lots of students with disabilities, but my very first job or one of my very first jobs was with a young lady with Down syndrome. And, you know, I got to have a date with her once a week and it was oh, wonderful. Yeah. They, I, I find that they teach us a lot about perseverance, about joy, about looking at things with eyes wide open. That's a wonderful right. lesson. That's yeah. right. So many lessons that we can learn yes. from each other. Well, now I'm honored to welcome back author and speaker Vianne King to discuss the importance of this day. Welcome back, Vianne. So nice to have you with us again. So oh, great to be here, Lori. Thank you. Well, what does the International Day of Persons with Disabilities mean to you? And why is it important that we recognize this day? Well, Lori, these days are great because it does recognize minority groups and we all that we've had to fight through to advance in life. But it's about so, so much more because I've had my disability or label of person with a disability for 23 years. Wow. But you know what? For a lot longer, I had a much bigger disability and it was me, my fears, my insecurities and this paralyzing virus was one thing. But it's funny now today, I am physically have more limitations, but I have never been more free. So what does this day mean to me? I believe that when you give people with a disability a voice, you allow them to shine when for years, maybe they felt dull or less than, but it also gives us the opportunity to empower not only people with disabilities, but anyone who's had paralyzing yeah. fear, right? Yeah. And disabilities that go beyond that. I have transverse myelitis. What's your disability. Yeah. And so today, um, I say that I'm actually honored to be a person with a disability because when people look at me, if they can say that if that confidently imperfect person with a disability can do it, so can I. So yeah. I have actually a challenge today on this day with uh, on International Day with Persons with Disabilities. I have a challenge okay. to step past your fears, ditch our I can't mentalities yeah. and be a person of inspiration and influence. Yes. Wonderful. Well, you know what? We take up that challenge. Here's what I say. Do it afraid, Vianne. That's my theme in life. And I just think no matter what has held us back, fear or disability, we can do whatever God's called us to do, right? And that's what you're doing. In fact, you recently received a 2021 Woman of Inspiration Award, the Influencer Award. Bravo, my friend. What does, it, does this award recognize and what does it mean to you? Well, first of all, like I was so honored to be among so many other amazing women of influence. And the word influencer is um, acknowledges a woman who has a global vision coupled with a contagious message um, to share with the world. And she's a mentor paving the road less traveled for the other women to follow. And as a person who's also a disability receiving the influencer award, it it shows that my passion to influence others, um, no matter if they have a disability or not, men and women, to see past their self-perceived limits, yes. this this takes this uh, this award affords me the opportunity to see that this is not just a dream to accomplish, but I'm actually it's my live reality, and that's an honor in itself that it goes beyond words. Wow. Well, they picked the right person because mm -hmm. I, I've said to you this before, but I do respect and I'm just so inspired by the way in which you've leaned in to what God has had for you in this season of disability. Um, you're such an inspiration to so many, especially to people with disabilities, and you challenge people, I love this, to lean into discomfort and see that our biggest limitations or disabilities are often the ones we put on ourselves. So what does it look like to lean into discomfort and how do we move forward from it? Oh, girl, there is so much I could say about this, but no one likes being uncomfortable, Lori. Right? Like, don't like being uncomfortable, but growth cannot happen from our lazy boy chair or couch, <laughs> let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, and well, for me, I hated people seeing me in this chair. And going from not letting 
liking people seeing me in the chair to winning first ever Miss Wheelchair, Wheelchair Canada, the transition of leaning into discomfort was letting people see me. Wow. Uh, was That was not only uncomfortable, it was painful. And oftentimes I felt degraded. Um, but I'm still in a wheelchair, so what changed, right? Yeah. Learning to love me, learning to love me, learning to let people see me. And not only the things I liked, you know, the good things I like about me, but even the things that are not so nice. And that's just a simple way to, to illustrate it. Yeah. But most importantly, it was about trusting the Lord with all of my heart and not leaning on this girl's understanding, but on his love for me so that in everything that I could do, I could learn to lean into discomfort and have the confidence to, uh, that I needed to grow. That's faith, Lori. Walking when you can't see, <laughs> uncomfortable, yes, and scary uh, <laughs> as all get out. Um, but when you lean into the discomfort of letting go of your own strength and relying on his, mm -hmm. you will most definitely move forward. Wow. Oh man, there is so much in that. And I, I mean, you live it out. That's number one, you live it out, Vianne. But I know there's somebody watching right now and they, they actually want to avoid discomfort. You know why? Because I know we're all a bit like that. Oh. We just want to avoid it. So like, what are the ways that we can maybe stop avoiding and, and lean in more to those difficult things in our life? Because I'm like you, I know that God has used me in my seasons, in my time, in my weakness more than in my strength. And so what do you say to someone who's just like avoiding right now? They don't even want to deal with their discomfort. Understanding that you are more courageous than you give yourself credit for. Um, realizing that, you know what, you can find another way to push past these fears and insecurities. And I, I, I have it unpacked in my book, but yeah. basically uh, I'll give you a quick example. Yeah. I did not want to drive unless I could drive with my feet. I did not want to find another way, but until, I, I mean, I wanted to be independent. I wanted that freedom. I wanted that. And when I saw other people doing way more with a lot less mobility than me, I'm like, I gotta, I gotta find another way to do this. So I embrace that other way. Wow. And so it starts with, it really does start with telling yourself, letting go of those I can't mentalities, right? Yeah. And and realizing that once you can accept your new reality, because like I, I'm a person with a disability. If I if I was to mourn and stay in, I don't want to be a person with a disability. Well, hey, that ain't gonna change overnight. Right. So accepting your new reality, embracing God's strength in you and find another way around that. Yes. And that is in many different ways. And it's not always as easy because there's, yeah. you know, it's just, we know that it's not always that easy, yeah. but with yeah. God, all things are possible, Lori. Yes. I mean, <sighs> well, you say it so well in your book, Cour Contagious Courage. And Vianne's book is available now in both audio and video format. That's amazing. And if you want to hear more of this inspiring message from Vianne, thank you so much, Vianne. Go to 700club.ca. All the info there, all the links are there. You can get the book and find out more about Vianne. But thank you, Vianne, for that great reminder today. God bless you as you keep stepping forward in courage. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. God bless you. Yeah. Well, Jen shares her incredible journey of raising a special needs child. Watch this. It was my first baby and I wanted to feel excited. I wanted to feel like, wow, this is glorious, but it wasn't. And I was afraid. I was really, really afraid. I pretty much assumed everything is going to be perfect and wonderful. You imagine that it's going to be this glorious moment when the doctor lifts up your baby into the heavens and says, you know, it's a girl. And when I had Addison, it was very different than that. The doctor lifted her up, and in that moment, both my husband and I knew something was, was wrong. It seemed like it had been hours of me being very much in the dark and wondering what's happening, where's my baby, what are they doing? My doctor actually came back into the delivery room. He began to draw pictures of what had gone wrong. Her esophagus and her stomach and her trachea and all these things were not developed properly. For her to survive, they were gonna have to do surgery. Naively, I was okay with that because what I was hearing the doctor say is, we can fix this. And that's when um, 
they said, and we're gonna do some chromosome testing. They performed the surgery on day one and day three, the geneticist delivered the news that in fact, Addison had trisomy 21, also known as Down syndrome. I had been serving the Lord most of my life. I sort of had this idea that I do good, God, and everything just works out perfect with a pretty little bow. I felt like I had been given less than. I felt that when God gifted Addie to me, I got a broken baby instead of perfect whole baby. Here's this child that's different, that's not so typical and not so perfect, and what is everyone gonna say about that? When Addie was about six months old, I hit a really low low. I was super angry at God. My husband was serving as a pastor, and I told him, figure it out. Tell the people what you gotta tell them, but I'm not going because I'm done with this whole thing. I'm done with God, I'm done with church. I thought where two or three come together and ask anything in his name, it will be done, and we'd done that. We'd prayed for Addie to be whole and healed, and that wasn't happening. My husband, he said, okay, I get it, you don't trust God, but can you trust me? And so I'm like, well, yes. He said, well, then as for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. So you follow me and I'm gonna keep following God and we'll see where this takes us. And as he followed God, it enabled me to walk through that low time and that pain. It wasn't an overnight sensation, but one step at a time, as she began to grow and as she began to develop and as I began to get rid of myself, I saw all of the goodness inside of this child and I began to see um, the ups, not the downs. Addie! <laughs> she has done way more than we ever dreamed that she could do. Her disability, I don't look at it like that anymore. I look at it as just opportunity for possibilities because that's what she makes of it. I think sometimes Addie's <laughs> um, privileged to be created the way that she is because she doesn't have the same inhibitions. She is the bright light in every room that we walk into. When God says to come to him like a little child, I get it. I understand why. It's just this innocence. It's the ability to enjoy life and not care about so many things that really don't matter. That's how Addie lives. Even when it's hard and when it's painful, it's often those times in our life we think it's a period. We think it's the end of the story. But what I've learned with Addie is there's another chapter and that you can turn the page and really the pain is just a comma. Embracing what God had placed in my hands, letting go of my expectations and ideals and surrendering that to Him, it did leave me very weak. But in my weakness, he was made so strong. One, two, 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 three, three. 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 <laughs> strike in. If they came to me and said, hey, we can change Down syndrome, I would say no thanks. Because I love the little girl that God created her to be. Addie, because of you, I learned to surrender. You brought me to a new level of dependence on God's will. Because of you, I have courage. You inspired an enduring change in my perspective and a leap in my faith. Because of you, I see now that no one is free from struggles or obstacles. We all have special needs. Addie, I love you so much, just the way that you are. I just love this story of Jen and Addie. It's very heartwarming because it just reminds me that in our greatest trouble, God gives us greatest blessing. How do we respond when our expectations 
turn into something that is so wrong. <laughs> when we feel, like Jen said, that we have been given less than, not perfect, broken. Jen and Marcus lived through a big hurt and Jen struggled. Their baby, their child was different than everyone else. And the thoughts were, what is everyone going to say? There was so much shame and we can get so angry at God. We pray, we follow scriptures and he doesn't answer and we lose trust of God. That's what Jen said. And here's what we need. We need others to help us. And I love what her husband said. You follow me and I will keep following God and see where God takes us. God shows us the goodness and his work in our supposed messes. For them, Addie was an opportunity for possibility, a bright light and innocence. Who or what can we learn from when God doesn't give us what we expected? Hard and painful things doesn't mean period, but a comma. God continues the story. He writes a new chapter. I love the passage that she quotes, and it's this one in Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Surrendering all to God can leave us very weak, but God. No one is free from obstacles. We all have disabilities and need God to meet us right where he can. And I'd just like to suggest that we have a pamphlet for you called Successful Families. Maybe you're going through a hurt and a challenge and you really need God in there. Please do communicate with us and touch base 1-855-759-0700. Up next, a reminder of how God uses our differences to help others. Hello, my name is Michelle, and I'm a prayer partner with 700 Club Canada. We have an amazing team waiting to pray with you, and we're available every day. We want to make it easy for you to connect with us. All you have to do is pick up your phone and call us at our toll-free number, 1-855-759-0700. And don't forget to let us know how God answered your prayers. We want to celebrate in your victories too. Our number again is 1-855-759-0700. We look forward to connecting with you today. Hey guys, my name is Daniel Ritchie, and I want to talk to you just for a couple of minutes about what it just means to be different in this world. And if there's something I know, it's, it's being different. And everywhere I go, people notice my two empty sleeves. And if I'm at the grocery store getting cans of ragu off the shelf with my toes or uh, at a burger joint, eating, eating a burger with my toes, people stop and stare and say rude things. And that's a weight sometimes. That's, that's a burden that I don't enjoy bearing. But what it also means is people want to ask me about what makes me different. And it gives me an opportunity to tell people about the hope that I have in Jesus. And Jesus says in John 17 to his disciples that the world's going to hate us because of the way that we live. But his prayer for us is not that we'll be taken out of the world, but that we'll remain in it, to be faithful to him, to show the world what it means to follow him in such a way where people ask questions, where we have to stick out by design. So embrace the difference, embrace sticking out, because we're different by design, and that's exactly the way that God wants it. Wow, I love how Daniel's embraced, you know, his disability. But really, in so many ways, I, I got thinking that as believers, mm -hmm. really, we should be different. And here's the thing. How should we be different being annoying and obnoxious? No. <laughs> but we should be different because we should be known by our love. That's right. We actually should stand out as being different, yes. you know, in this world. I love what uh, John 13, 35, it says it this way. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So that's how we're supposed to stand out, by being different, by our love. It's such a great reminder. I mean, someone like Daniel, he, you know, could have, could really help hold back, but he doesn't. But he doesn't, because you know, Daniel truly knows what it is to be different. Mm -hmm. He carries a weight, but he also sees the opportunity to share about Jesus. Yeah, like yeah. this is an opportunity. And he lives in the truth of Jesus and stands in this truth, knowing that whatever hard thing God has called him to do, he's gonna do it because God has equipped him to do it. And he remains in the world with his heart, showing the world that 
it, it, we can still follow Jesus with this heart, right? Mm -hmm. And so I asked you a question, what is different in your life that God can use for his glory? Mm -hmm. Embrace it because you are different by God's design. I just love how it is that Daniel has shared that, different well, by God's design. Exactly, and you know, Vianne talked about that in her interview today, that you can try to avoid the different, the pain, the disability, but when she embraced it, embraced being in the wheelchair, she said then she was able to actually live the life God life called free. her to live. That's right, God's yeah. gonna do something with it. Yeah, so we remind you today, like let's lean in and embrace even the difficult things in our life because then that God actually gives us everything we need uh, to go through them and even actually to shine. <laughs> so up next, our next Advent devotional unpacks the beauty of faith. Be glad, rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the autumn rains because he is faithful. He sends you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains. Joel 2, verse 23. What's the longest you've had to wait for something? I remember Christmas morning as a kid. I couldn't wait for it to come so I could open my presents. But waiting is so difficult. We expect everything to be at our fingertips the moment we desire it. We live in a world of easy downloads and instantaneous email and fast food, yet God finds ways of making us wait. The second candle of Advent is often referred to as the faith candle. So why is faith part of Advent? Well, waiting on God to act is what we're focusing on during the Advent season. And this anticipation of God showing up and the waiting being over. So you see, waiting and faith actually go hand in hand. And Advent is about waiting and faith. So what are you waiting on God for this year? Remember that there were 400 years of silence between the Old Testament and the New Testament as God's people waited for the Messiah. You know, as I thought about that, it just reminded me that God's timing is quite different from ours, right? The story of Jesus' birth gives us assurance and joy because even though they waited and it lingered for decades, God broke through at just the right time. Are you struggling with a lack of faith while you wait? That's okay. It doesn't take much faith to get God's attention. Jesus encouraged his frustrated followers this way, he said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will tell this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Wow, you see, most of us, we try to grow a forest in one day. And Jesus, however, invites you to begin with a tiny little seed, a, a seed of faith. Plant it, watch it grow, and wait for it to become all that you dreamed it would be. As we reflect on the Christmas story, we see an entire nation that was waiting, waited for centuries for their king to come. That required faith, faith to believe that God would come through, faith that he would fulfill his promises to them, and he did. Jesus, our Messiah, came at just the right time. So I guess the question for you and I is, are we willing to plant faith and wait on God? I encourage you to share with a friend or a family member something you're waiting for. Ask them to join you in the waiting. Tell God all about it and ask him to give you the faith to wait. So when we light the candle of faith, we anticipate the return of our Lord. Psalm 27, 14 says, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. See, the Lord grows our faith while we wait on him. Um, thank him that he's come just at the right time at Christmas and anticipate that at the second coming, it will be just on time. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Abigail had braced herself for this moment, a battle with cancer. The Grim Reaper was standing at the foot of my bed. Abigail says she then saw a vision of herself with Jesus in Jerusalem. He walked her past the cross and into the tomb. And he said, Abigail, when I sat up, you sat up and then he walked to the entrance of the tomb and in that moment i knew the nearness of heaven available now the latest teaching from gordon robertson
Well, I hope you've been reminded today that no matter what you're facing, no matter the struggle, no matter the difficulty, God is able to do beautiful things out of it. And that's what we believe at 700 Club Canada. The gospel is good for everyone. And if you partner with us, we're able to get this message of hope and healing across our nation. We make it really easy to give. You can start at $20 a month or a level that best reflects what you're able to do. And use Pledge Express because that actually saves uh, costs. It makes uh, our monies go farther and towards the ministry. So we encourage you to do that. Give us a call at 1-855-759-0700. We'll give you a thank you gift called the Nearness of Heaven. And we have a bonus additional uh, gift offer right now called Emmanuel God with us. It's free. So why don't you give us a call today and let's partner and do this together. Well, Shireen, it's been great to have you with us. What a wonderful week. And today really reminded me that really we're, we all have disabilities. Yep. We and all have challenges. And we all need to lean on God in those challenges, right. right? Yeah. Because, you know, life is not perfect, but God is, and he knows what he's giving us. Yeah. And uh, when we let it go to him and surrender it to him, he's able to help us be overcomers. That's right. That's right. And boy, we saw some great inspiring stories today yeah. of overcoming. Yeah. Well, we're going to pray and we know that prayer really helps us move through yes. the pain. You know, it's not about avoidance, <laughs> but it is about leaning in. And Janet said, please pray for my friend who is fighting a second bout of breast cancer. And Melanie said, pray that my husband stops drinking and doing drugs and accepts Jesus into his life. Wow. There's two really significant requests. Why don't you pray for Janet and I'll pray for, for sure. Mary. Heavenly Father, we bring Janet before you and we just thank you so much that you are the one who brings healing and can handle everything that's in our life. And so we pray for her second bout of breast cancer, just like you dealt with it in the first bout, you are more than able to take care of her in the second. Give her what it is that she needs. Give the doctors wisdom. And Lord, we just ask for her healing. May your will be done in Janet's life, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And Lord, I lift up Melanie and her family and the brokenness that's going on in her husband's life. Jesus, go get her husband. Mm -hmm. Just heal him and set him free and deliver him from evil and addiction. We know that you're able to do that. So I ask that you would do that in Jesus' name and give Melanie the faith and the hope to stand on in the meantime, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, 1 John 5, verses 3 and 4 say, And his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Wow. Well, there it is today. Thank you for watching. God bless you. To contact us, visit 700club.ca.